Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody, if you would, slip up your hands. Just begin to worship God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're worthy to be praised.
Somebody reach out and touch him as he walks by. You can just reach out and touch him. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to be with you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, let's continue to worship him for just a little bit. today do you love the presence of the Lord that you feel right now as the streets of this world fills with hate as the streets of this world fills with uncertainty and lies and just debauchery aren't you glad you can come into the house of God and you can feel the peace of God that passeth all understanding there's nothing like getting in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And there's nothing like coming and collectively joining together and getting in the presence of the Lord. It just feels good in the house today, don't it, church? Feels so good in the house. Hallelujah. say thank you to all of our visitors here today. Linda, good to see you. Patty Jr., good to see you. Those with you in the back. Matt, good to see you. Jesse, it's always good to see you. And whoever, I'm sorry if I don't see you. I'm 40 years old now, and so my eyes are not like they used to be. So thank you so much for being here. Aren't you glad you decided to come to the house of God? Hallelujah. Before we pray, we've just got one quick announcement to make, and that is this. Next Sunday, we will be honoring our graduates. Now, 
in times past and in years past, we've honored graduates and uh, we've given all the, pardon the, the pun, but all the pomp and circumstance when it comes to that. This year's a little different. They're getting theirs a little later, but it's still going to be just the same. Ashlyn Rowe, Jacob Burgess, congratulations on graduating through all this mess. <laughs> so we will be honoring them next Sunday uh, during the service. After the service, there'll be a table set up where you can go by and, uh, hey, give them some money. I don't know. I'm sure they'll take it. <laughs> and so ain't God good. And so we do want to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we have the screens that are going to be rolling here with the prayer requests. We have learned and understood that there are other people now that, are, uh, that have contracted the COVID virus. We're going to pray for them. We're going to pray against the virus. And some people say, like I've said before, some people say that it'll never go away. And they don't know the God that we serve. There's nothing that cannot be eradicated in his presence and utilizing his name and pleading his blood. There is nothing impossible with God. Do you believe it? Hallelujah. And so with faith high, if you have a prayer request, why don't you just raise your hands and wave your hands and let's go to God in prayer. My Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, we come together, we bind together this sickness, this COVID-19 in the powerful name of Jesus. We plead the blood over that situation, God. It may have been man-made, it may have been manufactured in some lab, God, but there's nothing impossible with you. You can eradicate it. If you can part a Red Sea, if you can feed a bunch of people manna, Lord Jesus, if you can raise the dead, heal the sick, there's nothing that you can't do. We claim healing in the name of Jesus for all of those who are battling COVID right now in Jesus' name. We bind the spirit behind it in Jesus' name. We lose healing upon this world. We lose healing upon our nation. We lose healing upon our community, God. And this church, Lord, in the powerful name of Jesus. Lord, we claim healing for marriages. We claim healing, God, for bodies, for finances, Lord. If there's anything that you can do, God, I know that you can do it. Hallelujah. Come on, why don't you just praise God right now for the answer. Come on, somebody, why don't you just praise him right now for his goodness, his mercy, his attention to your situation. Hallelujah. Come on, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be lifted up. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some worship. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you. We magnify you, Jesus.
glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. God is good to us. He gave us strength and help. He gave us a sound mind. Amen. He gave us a made-up mind to go to church today. Thank you for coming again. We're so grateful for all of our visitors that are here today. There's visitors sitting over here, over here, over here. Good to see Brother Tommy and his wife back there. Amen. This morning, praise God. Good to see all of you in the house of God, all of our visitors. Hallelujah. Just great to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. We want to go ahead and announce that this coming Wednesday night, we're going to be having in-house church service again. Praise God. We're going to open it up for everybody to come back to the house of God to have church. Also, Monday night prayer meeting. We're going to start this Monday night, first Monday night. Amen. To, uh, amen to having prayer back in our sanctuary for all of those who would like to come. We appreciate we had a pretty good crowd coming before we had to shut it all down. We had sometimes 40, around 40 people, up to 40s, maybe even a few more than that. Sometimes when it came to our Monday night prayer meeting, we hope that that don't fall off now. Amen. Since it's been a little while since we came together to pray, I hope that you'll stir your heart. Amen. Stir your heart, mind, soul. Amen. Make up your mind you're going to come back to the house of God and pray. Hallelujah. We need to pray, don't we? <clears throat> Amen. Prayer changes things. Prayer makes a difference. Amen. As your old black preacher said, if you don't pray, you don't stay, right? Amen. He was telling us the truth when he said that. <clears throat> Amen. If we don't pray, we, we don't stay. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. What, a, what an awesome God we are serving this morning. If you have got your Bible, or if you want to <clears throat> just simply look at the screen this morning. We're going to get right on into the word of the Lord and, uh, and hopefully share something with you that will help you. I'm going to read one. How about I read one verse of Scripture and let you be seated? Uh, Y'all have been standing now for over 30 minutes. Some of you have. And that's a long time to stand on your feet. So I'm going to read Psalms chapter 29 and verse 1. Let you be seated, but in your being seated, I want you to understand I'm going to keep reading the, uh, the scriptures here. Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength. God bless you. You can be seated. Verse 2 says, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord, <clears throat> the voice of the Lord, amen, is upon the waters. The God of glory thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaketh the cedars. Yea, the Lord breaketh the cedars of Lebanon. He maketh them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Sidon uh, like a young unicorn. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shaketh the wilderness. The Lord shaketh the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord maketh the hinds to calf, and discovereth the forest, and, the, and his temple doth every one speak of his glory. The Lord sitteth, sitteth upon the flood, yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. Amen. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Praise God. The Lord will give strength unto his people and the Lord will bless his people with peace. Praise God. Well, I want to examine this chapter tonight for just a few minutes. Praise God. Verses 1 and 2 of chapter 39 indicate to me, amen, that this chapter is written to the righteous. Amen. Those who love to give glory and honor, amen, to the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you love to give glory and honor to God? Let's give him a great big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout, God, we give you the honor that is due unto your name this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. This is written to those who love to worship their God. Amen. 
Amen. Verses 3 through 5. Amen. God gives to the righteous. Amen. An insight. God gives to the righteous an insight. Amen. In identifying his voice. Amen. How many of you want to know how to identify the voice of God? Hallelujah. Well, we all do. Amen. I want to know when it is God's uh, God speaking to me. Praise God. I want to know when God's speaking to me. I want to know when the enemy's speaking to me. Amen. I want to know when I'm speaking to myself. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be able to identify and discern, uh, amen, the voice of God. In verses 3 through 5, God gives the righteous the insight into identifying the voice of God. Amen. In one sense, when we hear the voice of God audibly, and there have been people, amen, that would testify this morning, I have heard the audible voice of God speak to me. Hallelujah. Or if we just simply hear the voice of God speaking to our spirit, speaking in our mind, speaking in our heart, speaking to our spirit man. Hallelujah. Amen. Those two things, amen, whether you hear the audible voice of God or you hear, amen, the still small voice of God speaking to your spirit, those two things are considered uh, to be a spiritual thing uh, or a spiritual experience. Amen. When you hear the audible voice of God, you are having a spiritual experience. When you hear the voice of God speaking to your spirit, you are having a spiritual experience. Hallelujah. But in Psalms chapter 29, amen, the voice of God, amen, is heard through a natural means. Psalms 29 describes the voice of God being heard through natural means. Praise God. It's like whenever there is a natural storm. The waters are falling. Amen. The thunder is rolling. Amen. The cedars are breaking. And the wilderness is shaking. Hallelujah. Amen. And all of these things will take place and do take place. Amen. When natural storms, amen, come to our area or come to certain areas of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. The water begins to fall. The thunder begins to roll. Amen. The trees begin breaking and the wildernesses, amen, begin, amen, shaking, amen, at the power and the force, amen, of the voice of God, amen, speaking through that storm. Amen. God is talking through nature today. God is talking, amen, through natural storms and winds and floods. Hallelujah. Verse 10, amen, of Psalms 29 says, The Lord sitteth upon the flood. The Lord sits upon the floods, the natural floods. He sits upon the storm. Hallelujah. He talks to men and mankind Amen. Through natural storms. He talks to us. Amen. In spiritual ways. He talks to us through natural ways. Hallelujah. The Lord sitteth king forever. But verse 11 says, the Lord giveth strength to his people and the Lord will bless his people with peace. Hallelujah. So whenever there are natural storms, amen, hallelujah, by which means God is trying to talk to people, trying to talk to mankind, hallelujah, amen, God is trying to bring, amen, peace to his people in the midst of the storm. But God is always trying to talk to mankind in general through storms. In Nahum chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says here, hallelujah, the Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Again, we can see in Nahum chapter 1, we see how that God has his way in the storm. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, right here in this United States, this blessed nation that we live in, praise God. Hallelujah. We have a season, amen, that is, that is called tornado season. And we are right in the middle of that tornado season, that hurricane season, that stormy season right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, the, the, here's just a few things that I learned as I 
thought about this this weekend and thought about it this morning again. Amen. Just a few things that I researched and found out that I did not know. The United States, the United States of America, amen, experiences more tornadoes than any other country in the world. Hallelujah. The United States of America, amen, experiences more tornadoes than any other country in the world. In fact, there is no other country in the world that even comes close to the tornadoes that the United States, amen, experience. Praise God. In terms of how many tornadoes we face in a year's time, on average, on average, which means that there are some years that has less tornadoes than the number that I'm fixing to give you. There are some years that have more tornadoes than the number that I'm about to get you, give to you. Amen. But on average, amen, the, the United States suffers uh, 1,253 tornadoes each and every year that we exist as a nation. 1,253 tornadoes, amen, come through this blessed nation of ours every year on average. Now, I didn't know that. I didn't, amen, I never stopped to even consider how many tornadoes we face as a nation every year. Amen. That is a massive, that is a massive amount of tornadoes for a nation, amen, to experience in one year's time. Praise God. The closest nation to us is Canada. And the average number of tornadoes in Canada every year is 100. Canada is the closest nation to us, and they average 100 tornadoes a year. The state of Georgia averages 30 tornadoes a year. The state of Alabama, 44 tornadoes a year. Mississippi, 43 tornadoes a year. Louisiana, 37 tornadoes a year. Amen. And I hear a lot of people talking about wanting to move to Texas. Hallelujah. Well, you may be wanting to move to Tornado Alley if you move to Texas. Amen. Because Texas has, on average, 155 tornadoes every year. Hallelujah. Amen. We have two now. We have two sections of the United States. Amen. That claim to be, that lay claim to being, amen, Tornado Alley. Hallelujah. The states of Missouri, Iowa, Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, amen, claim to be Tornado Alley. Hallelujah. But they claimed it after the first states claimed it. Amen. The first states to claim to be Tornado Alley in the United States were Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota. Hallelujah. And as I name off these states that are Amen. A part of uh, Tornado Alley here in the United States. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is obvious, amen, that right up the middle, amen, of this United States, from Texas to Canada, amen, we are hit by a lot of storms. We are hit, amen, by a lot, a lot of tornadoes. Praise God. Hallelujah. And every year, these massive amounts of, amen, tornadoes brings massive amounts of destruction, amen, to our nation. Hallelujah. Amen. So, praise God, in January of this year, I'm moving along real quickly. In January of 2020, there were 88 confirmed tornadoes in the, in the United States. February of 2020, there were 42 confirmed tornadoes in the United States. In March of 2020, there were 79 confirmed, uh, amen, uh, uh, tornadoes in the United States. On March the 3rd, a tornado hit Nashville, Tennessee. Amen. Nashville, Tennessee, of all places. Hallelujah. Amen. Was hit. It destroyed buildings. Amen. Houses and killed 24 people. Amen. In the city of Nashville in March, one of those 79 tornadoes. 
tornadoes, amen, hit Nashville, Tennessee, and killed 24 people, praise God. In April of 2020, there were 251 tornadoes that hit confirmed tornadoes amen the reason i'm saying it that way confirmed tornadoes because they are a lot of tornadoes that are seen amen by human eyes but are never confirmed by the weather amen by the meteorologists amen that are out there trying to chase down and run down all of these tornadoes so there's really many more tornadoes than what i'm giving you here amen on april the 12th on easter sunday amen they were numerous tornadoes that struck, amen, the southeastern United States, amen, in South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina, amen, there was a devastating tornado hit, amen, on Easter Sunday, amen, April the 12th, 2020, right here in the United States, among uh, many other tornadoes that hit the southeastern United States. In May, there was 130 confirmed tornadoes. In June, there was 93 confirmed tornadoes. In July, there was 43 tornadoes. Already in August, there has been 88 confirmed tornadoes in the United States. There have been, listen to this statement, there have been 87 deaths, amen, worldwide attributed to tornadoes in 2020. Worldwide, there have been 87 people that have been confirmed killed by a tornado. 77 of those 77 of those killed by tornadoes was right here in the United States. So that so far this year there's been 743 confirmed tornadoes in the United States. There's been over 6 billion dollars in damage done. Amen to various cities. Amen. Last week's Hurricane Laura hit Louisiana. Amen. And traveled north or through several states. It hit Louisiana with 150 mile an hour winds. It was a category four hurricane. Amen. It flooded houses and buildings and destroyed. Amen. Businesses and cities and amen and all those things. The last count that I heard, which was on Saturday, amen. And I'm sure that that count has went up since Saturday. There were 14 confirmed dead. Amen. That the news reporter said on the radio Saturday around 12 o'clock as I was headed home listening to the news. 14 confirmed dead. Praise God. Hallelujah. And in all of these stories, storms, amen, somebody needs to hear the voice of God talking to us, amen, in all of these storms, hallelujah, amen, they're not just happening to be happening, God has his way in the whirlwind, God has his way in the storm, amen, God speaks to us through storms, hallelujah, God speaks through us, amen, to us, Amen. Through storms. Praise God. So in all of these storms, God's voice needs to be heard. God's voice needs to be heard. Hallelujah. I hear him saying that I will not acquit the wicked. What are you hearing? The voice of God say. Amen. And all of these tornadoes, brother, what are you hearing? Amen. The voice of God say in the midst of all of these storms. Hallelujah. Amen. I hear God saying that America, amen, is not going to get by with the sins that she is committing today. Amen. America is not going, amen, to be acquitted of her sins. Amen. God is not going to let us, amen, get by with all of the sin sickness. Amen. That is over. Overwhelming here in America. Hallelujah. Amen. We're not going to get by as a nation. Amen. All of these storms have hit our nation. Hallelujah. So as a nation, amen, how does God, amen, picture America? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, he has to picture us as a very sinful and ungodly nation. Because the next closest nation to us only gets 100 tornadoes a year. Hallelujah. We get over 1,200. I hear him saying that I will not at all acquit the wicked. Nahum chapter 1 and verse 3. Amen. God said, I will not at all acquit the wicked. Amen. You know what he's saying? He said, I'm not going to just drop their charges. 
Amen. I'm not going to just forget about their crime and about their sin and about their wrongdoing. I'm not just going to turn a blind eye, amen, to the, uh, to the sodomites, to the homosexuals, to, amen, the lesbians, to, amen, the whoremongers and the whores. Hallelujah. I'm not going to just turn a blind eye, amen, to what I see, amen, going on in America, in the politics of America, amen, in the society of America. I'm not just going to turn turned a, a blind eye to that and just simply drop the charges against the crimes that they are committing against me. That's what I hear God saying, amen, in the midst of the storms. I'm not going, amen, to simply acquit the wicked for their wickedness. Amen. Right now, all across this United States, we are witnessing a great injustice to our judicial system, praise God. Hallelujah. Do you hear me now? Hear me this morning. I won't be up here that long. Hear me this morning. Amen. We are eyewitnesses. Amen. We see with our eyes and we hear with our ears. Amen. Uh, the injustices that are coming. Amen. To our justice system here in the United States. There are policemen out there trying their best. Amen. To do the jobs that they've been hired to do. They are out there. Amen. And they are arresting criminals by the hundreds every night. They are arresting, amen, vandals and looters and thieves and robbers and murderers. And they're arresting them by the hundreds every night, amen, that, that they go out there on the streets in the midst of, amen, this riotous crowd that, amen, seemingly thinks that they're going to take charge of our nation. Hallelujah. Amen. They're going out there. They're arresting them. They're charging them with crime. And they're putting them behind bars to only watch as leftist liberal district attorneys turn them loose, acquit them of their charges, amen, turn the blind eye to their crimes, amen, that they've committed, amen, and just simply turning these criminals and looters, amen, loose to go back out there and continue their, and continue their criminal activities, which is exactly, amen, what they are doing and exactly what they're going to continue to do, amen, as long as these district attorneys, amen, turn these criminals loose, hallelujah, amen. It's almost as if there's nothing else better to do in life than to go out there and to rob somebody and beat somebody and murder somebody and burn somebody's business down. Hallelujah. Amen. I come to make a statement this morning that God is not, amen, on the same level, amen, as our liberal district attorneys throughout this United States. Hallelujah. Amen. He does not turn his back on sin. He does not turn a blind eye, amen, to the ungodlinesses that are going on in, amen, this nation of ours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the storms are attacking us. That's why the storms are hitting us one after another, after another, after another. Amen. Hallelujah. Every day, amen, every week, there's a storm somewhere, amen, in the United States of America. Hallelujah. God is not a liberal district attorney that's just going to, amen, call us into his courtroom and just say, I just forget about what you've been doing, going back out there and continue, amen, the sin business that you've been doing. Well, that's what, the, that's what a lot of the Protestant churches preaches today, amen, hallelujah, amen. If you're a sinner, just confess your sins to the Lord and then don't worry about your sins. God understands you're a sinner. Just keep on going out there sinning, praise God. That's hogwash. Amen. That's hogwash this morning. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Amen. God is looking for a people. Amen. That will repent of their sins. Get baptized in water in Jesus' name. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Let God the Holy Ghost lead them and guide them. Amen. Into all righteousness and truth. God is looking for men and women. Amen. That will stand upright on their two feet. Amen. And declare that they are children of God. Amen. They're going to hate ungodliness. They're going to despise. Amen. Wickedness. Amen. From the utterances of their hearts. Hallelujah. That's why, thanks be unto God, there's still some preachers today. Amen. That preach against sin. 
Amen. That's not preaching in favor of sin. Hallelujah. I'm afraid that God is going to judge some preachers today. Amen. The same way he is those same liberal district attorneys that's just, amen, letting people go. Let people have their own way. Let people do what they want to do in this world without any consequences. Hallelujah. I hope and pray to God this morning that you'll wake up and open your eyes and realize, hey, amen, God wants you to serve him. God wants you to live for him. God wants you to separate yourself, amen, from the ungodlinesses that are in the world. And be ye holy, amen, for he is holy. Hallelujah. He will not turn a blind eye to sin. Amen. And in all of this, the sad thing about in all of these storms and all these tornadoes and hurricanes, in all of this, the righteous suffer alongside of the unrighteous. Amen. There are apostolic churches, praise God, that were destroyed in this, amen, recent hurricane that came through. Praise God. We got pictures, amen, I think from Brother Harris Church that was just, just, just annihilated. Praise God. Just uh, experienced extensive damage. I think somebody told me later on that Brother Muse's home church there in Louisiana suffered damage from the hurricane. Praise God. So, amen. We know that it rains. Somebody say it rains. It rains on the just and the unjust. We may not understand it. Praise God. But when God, amen, has to get a nation's attention, amen, he will do whatever he has to do to get that nation's attention. And God is today and has has been for many years, amen, trying to get America's attention, hallelujah. If anybody ought to be serving God, America ought to be serving God, amen. We are blessed, amen, with, amen, more stuff than any other nation of the world. Amen. Those that live in poverty in America, amen, would be first-class citizens in most third-world countries. You hear me? Amen. Our poorest would be considered rich. Hallelujah. Amen. We are witnessing a great injustice. Yes, we are. Hallelujah. But God is not going to just turn a blind eye to it. Amen. He will not turn a blind eye to sin. He will forgive sin. As long as there's a contrite spirit and a broken heart and a willingness, amen, to forsake sin. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you're here this morning, this is the first time you've ever heard any preaching like that. Amen. Then you're here for a reason. God's got you here so you can hear it. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time, amen, that you understand that God loves you as a sinner. Amen. But God hates the sin. Amen. That you're caught up in this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. And somewhere along life's journey, you're going to have to learn, amen, that with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, amen, you're going to have to bow your knees in an altar of repentance, amen, and cry out to God and surrender your life to God and say, God, take me and mold me in your likeness and in your image. Amen. God will forgive sin as long as there is, amen, repentance of that sin. Hallelujah. You got to be ready to make an about face. You got to be ready, amen, to make a 180 degree turn and go in another direction. Amen. You got to quit hanging out with that old sinful crowd. Amen. Doing those old sinful things. <laughs> time to make up your mind. It's time to get with another bunch of people. Amen. It's time that you make up your mind. You're going to go to church. You're going to live for God. Amen. You're going to, be, you're going to become a part, amen, of God's amen chosen people. Hallelujah. Amen. That you're going to fellowship with the righteous and not the unrighteous of this world. Amen. Oh, I would go to church but I'd have to give up my old friends. Well, you're going to be known by who you hang out with. Hallelujah, you may not be doing drugs yourself, but if you hang out with drug addicts, guess what? Everybody's going to attribute you to drugs. Hallelujah, amen. If you, may, you may not ever drink a, a drop of alcohol in your life, but if you hang out with alcoholics, guess what? Amen, you're going to be considered alcohol, an alcoholic as well. Hallelujah, because you are known by whom you hang with. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I didn't know I was even going to say all that stuff, but I said it anyhow. I ain't taking it back. I ain't going to apologize. Kamala Harris. <laughs> it's a political year, so I'm going to get a little political myself. 
Kamala Harris is one of many, amen, who are out there doing fundraisers to pay the bond for those looters and rioters to get out of jail. As if to say to them, amen, let's just let these people, amen, get away with what they've done. Praise God. We're going to go their bond. We're going to let them out of jail. We know that no judge is ever going to hear their case anyway. Amen. The charges are going to be dropped. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm here to say to you this morning, my God, I hope, amen, that she is not the next vice president of the United States. Amen. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'll declare it. I hope that Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, who whatever her name is, is not the next vice president of the United States. Hallelujah. Amen. They'll be turning all of the criminals loose. Amen. I know that there's criminals in prison today unjustly. Amen. They've been given unjust sentences. Amen. And maybe those people need to be given a second chance. Amen. But not everybody needs a second chance. Amen. They get a second chance at life. They get to live inside a prison cell. Hallelujah. They get to die of old age, most of them now, because they've taken the, amen, the, the, the death penalty away in most of the uh, uh, states in the union. And, amen. So those people got a second chance when they voted down the death penalty. Praise God. Now they get to live. Amen. They get to live their lives inside a prison cell. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. It's better than dying and going to hell, right? Amen. Hopefully inside a prison cell, some preacher, amen, will get in there and get to them and they hear the righteousness, amen, of God's words preached to them and they'll have a heart change in the prison cell. They live another day, they get another, another chance to hear the gospel, amen, to hear another preacher, hallelujah, and hope be unto God, amen, there's an apostolic preacher that's going to go in there and preach truth to them. God can and will use storms to show his displeasure with a people and with a nation. Think about America has over a thousand hurricanes and tornadoes a year. The next closest one is Canada with around a hundred. That alone speaks to me. That's that I hear the voice of God in the storms. <laughs> I hear the voice of God in all these storms. Amen. The fact that the closest nations to us is Canada, and they only have around 100, that makes me want to live for God. Amen. That makes me want to go to church. That makes me want to, when I go to church, to not sit on my pew like I'm not on a log. Amen. But to get on my feet, get my hands lifted in the air, open my voice. Amen. And praise and love and adoration to the King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Amen. With all of these storms going on around us, amen, we need to hear the voice of God saying, Hey, son, hey, daughter, it's time to go back to church. Hey, it's time to get back to worshiping God. It's time to get back, amen, to be in faith. Faithful to the house of God. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I can hear God speaking. Amen. Loudly and clearly to me. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time to sell out. Amen. It's time to dedicate it all and give it all to Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, this is not just another message about a storm. This is a message about many storms. The word storms are mentioned in the Bible 14 times. You figure 66 books in the Bible. I, don't, I didn't look up how many pages it is and how many words they are and all that good stuff. You know, it's a, some of you have a, a, some of you have been in church for a long time and would confess, I've never read my Bible all the way through. <laughs> so uh, it's a pretty long book. It takes a, takes a made-up mind to make up your mind to read through your Bible in a year. Praise God. It really does. Amen. So when you read through your Bible, you'll come across the word storms 14 times in Scripture. The word stormy is mentioned only four times in Scripture. So why am I saying that? So that you'll understand that, that the Bible is not just full of storm stories. Amen. There's two in the New Testament that we hear preached about all the time. 
Amen. The storm uh, when the disciples of the Lord and Jesus got in the ship and he said, let's go to the other side. Amen. Out there in the middle of the sea. Amen. There was a storm that came up. Praise God. It rocked the boat. Amen. There was thunder and there was lightning. There was winds. There was waves, waves tossing the boat. The disciples were out on the bow of the ship watching the storm, fighting the storm. Jesus was asleep. Amen. Underneath the boat. Praise God. Hallelujah. They got so scared they went down and woke up Jesus and said, uh, you know, uh, aren't you concerned that we're going to perish out here to the Lord? Lord. Amen. The Lord got up, went out and rebuked the, the wind and the waves, and it was all calm. Praise God. That's one of the New Testament storm stories. Another one is the Apostle Paul on a ship. Amen. Making his way to Rome. Praise God. Hallelujah. And there in the middle of the sea, amen, the ship that Paul was on and all those soldiers that were set there to guard him, amen, got in a storm. And eventually, without telling the whole story, the ship fell apart. But God in a vision had told the Apostle Paul that no man is going to lose his life in this ship. Amen. So even though the ship fell apart from the force and the wind, amen, of the storm, no man lost their life. They floated to shore. Those that could swim, swam the shore. Those that couldn't, they grabbed a board that blew off of the ship, amen, and they made their way to the shore. Praise God. Hallelujah. So there's two stories in the New Testament about storms, and we hear them preached about a whole lot. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, but we do need to take heed to the purpose of the storms. The purpose of the storms is this. God is speaking through natural means to get men's attention. I want to tell you why those people were hunkered down in their basements, in their cellars, in their storm shelters, or wherever they were hunkered down in. Amen. Is that Hurricane Laura? Amen. Pounded the uh, the, the coast of Louisiana and then the whole state and then the other states that it, that it hit. Praise God. I guarantee you there was some prayers going on. There were some voices, amen, crying out to God, amen, that God hadn't heard in a long time. I'm sure they were backsliders repenting. They were sinners crying out to God, amen, saying, God, if you'll just have mercy on me and let me live, I'll live for you. How many of them will keep their word now that the storm is over? I don't know, amen, but all I can do is to pray that some of them, amen, will, amen, get, God will get their attention, amen, in the middle of a storm shelter somewhere, amen. Amen, and they'll make up their mind to live for God. That's all I can hope for, that some of them will serve God because of the storm. And that's the purpose of the storm. If there are natural storms in the natural elements of the earth, then there must be spiritual storms in the spiritual elements of the earth. Strangely, strangely, when you read about those storms in the Word of God, strangely, the Bible does not give credit for spiritual storms that come our way to the devil. You won't find God blaming the devil for those storms. In Psalms chapter 107, I'm going to read a few verses of Scripture here to you, if that's all right. Verses 23 through 32. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in the great waters, these see the works of the Lord and His wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man. Amen. And are at their wit's end. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they be quiet. Amen. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works 
to the children of men. Praise God. Hallelujah. So strangely, the storms are not credited to the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord takes credit for these storms. Praise God. Verse 24 of Psalms 107 says, These see the works of the Lord. And then in verses 8, verse 15, verse 21, and verse 31, the words are repeated over and over and over again. Amen. And those words are this. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Amen. For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Praise God. Hallelujah. So why would God allow, amen, something beyond a natural storm? Amen. Why would God allow a spiritual storm to come our way? Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you what, when we get to the place, amen, that we begin to neglect him. Amen. To forget about him. Amen. To put him on our back burner, so to speak, and put everything else ahead of them. Uh, amen. Beware. Amen. A spiritual storm. Uh, amen. It's on its way to you. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works unto the children of men. It is repeated over and over and over. Amen. To let us know that when we forget to praise him. For his goodness and his wonderful works. The Bible says here that these men that went down to the seashore that, amen, were acquainted with ships and acquainted with the storms of the sea. The Bible says that they got to the place that they were reeling uh, to and fro and they were staggering like drunk men. Amen. And at one point they got to their wits end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They let the storm rock them to their wits' end. Hallelujah. But like so many of us today, hallelujah, we just stick God on a back burner somewhere and we don't call on Him until we get to our wits' end. Hallelujah. If that's what it takes, that's what it takes. And God in his long suffering and patience, hallelujah, will send spiritual storm after spiritual storm after another spiritual storm. How many spiritual storms have you been through already this year? Amen. I don't know. Hallelujah. I can't count them all. Praise God. It seems like there's one storm after another storm after another storm. Amen. 2020 has been nothing but a year of, amen, not just natural storms, but spiritual storms. Hallelujah, but what is God trying, amen, to get us to do, amen, at any point, amen, in that spiritual storm, amen, when we awaken ourselves and we realize, hey, I haven't been giving God, amen, the praise that is due unto his name, and we start praising him, amen, God will speak to that storm and it will become calm. But if God has to push us to our wit's end, He will push us to our wit's end. Because the Bible says, amen, when these people had come to their wit's end, that they cried out to him because of the storm. And he heard their prayer. And he spoke calm to that storm. Praise God. He brings us out of our distresses. Amen. He maketh the storm to calm. He maketh the waves to be still. He's simply reminding us that we should not forget to praise him. Hallelujah. In verse 31 and verse 32, amen, we should never neglect to praise him and worship him in his house. Hallelujah. Amen. So who's in charge of the storms? Uh, Amen. God's in charge of the storms, naturally and spiritually. And don't let us ever be caught giving credit to the devil. I feel like I'm going to be repeating what another preacher said. I think it was Brother Chris. He came back a while back and preached about the storms. Now, I'm not trying to preach his message or repeat his message or anything, but he talked about 
how that most of all of the hurricane, hurricanes that hit the United States come across the ocean from Africa. Amen. It's almost as if they form there in Africa. Hallelujah. And there have been some that would say that the Africa, the country of Africa is so full of sorcery and witchcraft and debauchery. Amen. That those people, amen, get together. They have whatever witches and warlocks and sorcerers do. Praise God. Hallelujah. That they get together and they conjure up, amen, these hurricanes. Praise God. And they send Amen. These hurricanes across the, Atlantic, across the Atlantic Ocean. Amen. Every year. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, and they hit our United States and they bring destruction to our United States. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it does seem to be strange how that all of the hurricanes or most of the hurricanes come. Amen. From that direction. Hallelujah. But I'm not going to give the credit. Amen. To the hurricanes that come our way. Amen. To no witch or no warlock or any sorcerer. Amen. Down in Africa. Praise God. If a hurricane hits America, God said, let it be. Because he's trying to wake us up through the storms. What in the name of God would witches and warlocks and sorcerers be trying to wake us up over? Hallelujah. Amen. If they only knew. Amen. If they only knew. Praise God. Oh, yeah, just don't ever give credit to the devil. God's desired results of natural storms is to get men's attention and to cause them to repent of sins. God's desired results of spiritual storms is to get his church back to giving him the praise and the honor and the glory that he so rightly deserves. I heard something yesterday, and you may have heard the same thing. Amen. But I heard a man make a statement yesterday, and it shook me. I don't know why. I mean, it, it's just a saying. It's just something that, that he said. And I'm sure that he heard it from somebody else, and they heard it from some. I don't know the source of the statement that was made. And I'm sure that this guy was just repeating something he heard somebody else say. So I'm just going to repeat what I heard him say. And I hope it shakes you. Even in, in the simplicity of it all, I hope it shakes you the way that it shook me. He said the devil came up to a warrior. If the musicians want to come to the instruments. He said the devil came up to the warrior. Are you listening to me? And he whispered in his ear. You cannot withstand this upcoming storm. And we're looking at political storms and natural hurricanes and all kind of spiritual storms. And the devil would love to whisper in our ear. The devil would love to whisper. That's not all that was said. I'm going to finish it in a moment. He would, love to listen. he would love to whisper in every prayer warrior's mind and heart in this sanctuary. Hallelujah. He'd love to whisper in our ears. And say to us, you simply cannot withstand the upcoming storm. But the warrior whispers back into the devil's ear, I am the storm. I am the storm. And what he was basically saying, Brother Barfield, devil, I'm the storm that you need to be concerned about. I see all of the storms that are happening around me, and guess what? I'm going to keep on standing for God. I'm going to keep on living for God. I'm going to keep on doing right, living holy, living separated from the world. 
I can see all the storms that you're talking about, devil. Hallelujah. But I'm going to whisper back in your ear, I'm the storm. Amen. That you need to be concerned about, devil. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I'm the storm. Why should we allow the devil, amen, to strike fear into our hearts over storms, uh, amen, that he has no control over? Amen. Why should we let the devil strike fear in us, amen, over storms that he don't have any control over? Amen. We need to put, amen, the fear right back where it belongs. Amen. We need to put fear back on him. Amen, by letting him know, amen, that we're going to be a destructive force, amen, against the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen, devil, I'm the storm that you need to worry about. Amen, I'm the storm, amen, that's going to bring down your kingdom. Amen, the church is the storm, amen, that's going to tear down, amen, and cause the kingdom of darkness, amen, to crumble at our feet. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Devil, I'm going to be your worst nightmare from here on out. <laughs> I hate to let you in on the secret. Amen. But, devil, I'm going to be your worst nightmare. Amen. From this day. Amen. To the day that I make heaven my home. Hallelujah. I'm going to do everything in my power to make you miserable. I'm going to do everything in my power and in my control. Hallelujah. To torment you. Amen. And to cause you struggle. Hallelujah. Long in your purpose in life. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. How am I going to be the devil's nightmare? Amen. By no matter what comes your way from here on out. Amen. Devil, we're going to keep on living the gospel. We're going to keep on uh, witnessing the gospel. We're going to keep on preaching the gospel. And the gospel is something that the devil cannot handle. The devil cannot handle the truth of God's word. Hallelujah. Amen. And with that gospel, we're going to save the lost, heal the sick. We're going to cast out devils and demons. Uh, amen. That possess the people. Amen. That are bound by them. That's what we're going to do, devil. I'm the storm that you need to be concerned about, devil. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to pray and we're going to create, amen, in the spiritual atmosphere, amen, a turmoil against the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Listen. <laughs> I feel, a, I feel a something coming on here. Amen. We've all seen the pictures of the other uh, tornadoes as they are up there in the sky and they begin to amen they begin to circle and they begin to uh, amen just spin and spin and spin and how they come down out of the clouds amen down on the planet earth and they destroy uh, and, and they wreak havoc amen upon cities and upon buildings and upon homes hallelujah I want you to picture yourself amen as that tornado as that amen that power full of force hallelujah as this thing starts spinning this morning Amen. It's going to come down out of the heavenlies. Hallelujah. And it's going to wreak havoc. Amen. On hell and all of his. Amen. Demons this morning. Hang on just a minute. Amen. Our prayer tomorrow night is going to be heard as thunder and lightning throughout the corridors of hell. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you're a prayer warrior, we need you to come to church. Amen. Tomorrow night. Amen. Because we need to send a storm hell's way. We need to send thunder and lightning. Amen. Through our prayers. Hallelujah. That's going. Amen. To shake the corridors of hell. Oh, hallelujah. Our praise and our worship, hallelujah, is going to create the wind and the rain that puts out hell's fires this morning. Hallelujah. That's what our praise is going to do. Amen. We're not going to play around and praise God. Hallelujah. Just superficially, but we're going to put our whole heart into praising God. And our praise and our worship is going to be the, going to be the wind and the rain that puts out hell's fire. Now, hold on just a minute. What you don't realize here this morning 
is that when we let the Holy Ghost reign in this sanctuary, that rain is putting out hell's fires that have been built up against us. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. I want you to say with me, I am a warrior. I am a conqueror. I am an overcomer. And I know you, I've had you to say those things in the past. I want you to add something to the list. Amen. I am a storm. I am a storm against hell. Hallelujah. Amen. My prayers, my worship, amen, is going to create a storm against hell. Hallelujah. I'm going to be a storm, amen, so powerful that hell, amen, can't handle me. Hallelujah. Amen. The higher praise tabernacle is going to be a storm so powerful, amen, that hell cannot handle us. Oh, I feel it stirring. Amen. I feel it stirring. I feel that wind blowing. I feel the turbulence, amen, in the spirit realm this morning. Uh, Come on, church, it's time we come out from hiding, amen, in our basement and send the devil down to his basement. Hallelujah. Send him into hiding. Hallelujah. Uh, let's send him in hiding. Revive us, oh God. Oh, that men would praise the Lord. Oh, that men would magnify the Lord. Oh, that men everywhere would lift up the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, what's wrong with right now? What's wrong with today at Higher Praise Tabernacle? Amen. Oh, that men would praise Him for His goodness and His wonderful works toward men. I'm getting close to it getting done. Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and the waves, and there was a calm. That was a natural storm. Why can't you and I pray and rebuke the powers of hell instead of, amen, creating a, a, instead of creating a calm, amen, why don't we create a stormy havoc, amen, on what the devil's plans are, hallelujah, amen, why, amen, I'm going to put up the title of my message here this, this morning or evening, let's rain on his party. Come on, he's tried to rain on our party enough. Amen. It's time that we rain on his party. It's time we come become a storm against his party this morning. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right, all right. You getting ready? You getting ready? Amen. Are you getting ready to rain on his party? Are we getting ready to rain on the devil's party? I need an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. We getting ready. All right, Brother Avery, give me about 30 seconds of some awesome drum playing here. Just do something. devil amen that's our thunder hallelujah amen do you hear our thunder amen do you hear our thunder devil all right brother Clint give me some on that piano somebody want to come and hit the organ Stand to your feet. Let's all give God a great big hand clap of praise. Amen. That hand clap of praise represents our wind and our rain. And we are creating a storm. Amen. That the devil is not going to be able to handle this morning. Hallelujah. He can dish it out to us. Let's dish it back to him. Come on, sing something. Come on. Let's work
little bit better than y'all are right now, all right? They found a little bit better way to worship God than y'all are right now. So, amen, when I see that swirling wind of that, of that tornado in the clouds, praise God. Hallelujah. I start getting a little bit concerned. Hallelujah. Amen. We need a circular motion. Amen. Created in the house of God. Amen. So that we can worry the devil this morning. Amen. About just what we're going to do. Amen. I want somebody over here to lead the way. Come on, folks. I don't want you walking around. I want you to run around the house of God. I want you to create a, amen, an atmosphere, hallelujah, explosion this morning in the house of God. Hallelujah.
church can create a storm that the devil cannot, cannot handle. Hallelujah. Amen. That's exactly where we got to get. We got to get to the place. Hallelujah. Instead of us feeling the wind and the rain, amen, that he's pushing towards us. Hallelujah. He's got to feel our rain. He's got to feel our wind. He's got to feel our fire. He's got to feel the lightning, amen, and the thunder, amen, that, that, that reigns in the house of God. Hallelujah. One more time, give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise here this morning. Hallelujah. One more time, praise Him. One more time, shout glory. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy and your ways, God. Hallelujah. Not have the 
We need God to, amen. Can you imagine being a teenager in times like these? You and I may have came through periods of history when we were teenagers when it was bad. Amen. But we didn't face things that teenagers are facing here today. Amen. Stretch your hands. Stretch your hands in the direction of our young people. If there's a young person standing next to you, amen. Stretch your hands in their direction. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray, Lord, that you would create God, in our young people that drive in a determination that hell and a fire that hell can never quench. And a, and, amen, and, a, and a desire, God, that hell can never quench, God. Hallelujah. God, let our young people be on fire for you, God. Let them be a force to be reckoned with. Let them be a storm that's going to send hell. Amen. Looking for cover himself, God. Hallelujah. God bless our young people. God bless the youth of Higher Praise Tabernacle. Hallelujah. God restore them and strengthen them and renew them and set them on fire, God. Like lightning flashing in the sky. Let our young people be fire from heaven. Fire flashing in the darkness. Great bolts of lightning. Hallelujah. Just flashing in the nighttime. Hallelujah. Racking havoc on the kingdom of darkness and the powers of hell here today. Hallelujah. God, we love you. We appreciate you, God, and we give you honor. We give you praise. We give you the worship, God, that you are due this morning. We're not going to stand idle by the wayside and let somebody else do our worship. We're not going to be standing idle in the marketplace in this 11th hour letting somebody else get the work done, God. We're going to be up and about your business, God. We're going to be doing what you called us to do. We're going to be living for you, witnessing for you, preaching your truth, declaring righteousness in an hour when righteousness may be hard to find, find God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Can we just close our eyes and lift our hands to the Lord today? Can we just be grateful for, for a Holy Ghost filled church? Can we just be grateful for a Holy Ghost filled family that loves each other and cares and prays and fasts and seeks God? Hallelujah. i 
sit there on your couch you don't need to lay down there on your bed while the church is worshiping God for you it doesn't matter that you're in your home alone or if you're in the house with your family when we start worshiping God the way that we have this morning you need to get up off that couch you need to get up off that bed you need to get up off that amen that 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 bed of comfort hallelujah amen and you need to make a talk of noise unto the Lord and you need to shout and you need to dance and you need to run around in your house. Hallelujah. All that men everywhere would praise. It matter if you're in church or not. Praise him in your home. Praise him on your job. Praise him when you're on vacation. Praise him wherever you are. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Thank you for listening. I did not intend to stay up here this long this morning, but I'm not going to apologize for what God has done. God has restored some folks in here. God has healed some folks. God has restored. God has renewed some people in this house this morning. Hallelujah. That's what's coming to church is all about. Amen. And get a fresh word from God, a fresh renewing from God. If you're sitting on this right hand, my right hand side. This morning, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Remember to try to come tomorrow night for prayer meeting. If you can, come Wednesday night for our midweek service. If you can, hallelujah, amen. Come and let's 